Hey guys, I am so excited for this one. I just figured out, and I know other people have done it, how to make these bricks really quick for the background. It's way easier than it looks. <laughs> Let's get started. I am one of those last minute planners. Welcome to Deliberately Creative. I am Stephanie and we are going to do this warm and cozy fireplace with a stocking hanging on the wall drying by. If you don't want a stocking hanging on the wall, hang a hat, hang some mittens. You know, it's a nice warm place where uh, things can dry. I just figured out how to do this fun brick background that was the thing that people were suggesting yesterday instead of doing wallpaper thank you for suggesting doing brick instead of wallpaper this is going to be so fun and easy but i want to say hello and welcome everybody coming into the chat thank you so much for being here i am really excited i see debbie and suzanne and Catherine and mary thank you guys so much uh, if you have any questions, make sure and put them into the comment section if you are watching this after the video. And if you're here right now, thank you for coming in and chatting with us and enjoying kind of a calm and cozy day. I know some people are in the midst of snowstorms. Some of us are in the midst of rainstorms. Uh, some have possibilities of flooding. If you live near a creek, thank you. Thankfully, I'm up on a bit of a rise, and there's I'm in the middle of town. So, you know, there, it's I don't have a creek really close by. It's about a mile away. So, I think I'm going to be okay. This is the fireplace for Doodle Wash Day number 20. Doodle Wash 2020, Day 20. Woo, that's all... Wow. <laughs> working out there, eh? Um, so for the background right here, look at that. I just did this just now. And what I did is I went and found one of my blocks of um, magic eraser type material. This is a close cell foam that is used for scrubbing out stains. And this is a brand new block. What I did so I went, just took my scissors and cut off a section. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to cut off a section. I took a tongue depressor wood stick about the width of the bricks that I want to make, a pair of scissors, and it goes fast. I've got my, I've got my brick stamp made now. This lovely rectangular shape. See, that's the size of my bricks. What I'm thinking is that for the background, I'm going to do the big bricks, but to make the bricks go across, I have to put a mask on here. And, you know, people go, oh, mask. Oh, no, you're talking, you know, what voodoo are you talking here? This is so simple. A mask is basically just a piece of paper that we put down to block the image that we don't want to print on. So what I'm going to do is just, because I can see through this, see, I can see through this. So I'm just going to do a rough shape. I'm not, see, I'm not even really, really, really being careful. Just a rough shape. Looks kind of funny, doesn't it? Looks like a giant jingle bell. And then I'm going to cut it out. We are stamping with just plain watercolor. We are not going to be using ink. If you have an ink pad that you like the colors of and you don't mind mixing your colors up a little bit, go for it. But I am using just, see, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just gonna lay down and protect our surface. We'll talk about where the designs came from in just a minute. So what I'm doing is I'm going to my watercolor and I'm looking for a brown and a red. That's all I used. See, that's what I've got right here. I've already got a little bit of it on this one, so I'm just going to use the one I used before. Get my paint wet with a wide brush and then just dab it on. Don't, don't worry about making it perfect. You want it to be sort of imperfect. 
Then grab some of whatever red you want. It just helps to add a few different colors Back to that brown. See, I'm really loading this up. Once I've got this loaded up, I probably won't have to add any more paint to it. I will just add a little bit of water. And if you look at this, you see how you've got the, let's see, I don't know. Let's zoom in. On these sponges, they have this lovely, you know, it's very fine little dots it makes it look really like a brick. So let's zoom back out. And welcome everyone coming in. We are making a brick background on watercolor paper. This watercolor paper is um, 140 pound, 100% cotton paper by Arteza. It was from their uh, cotton cards. So I was cutting the cards and making two card fronts for every card that came in the package. So the box was like 20 cards or 25 cards. So I've got either 40 or 50. I can't remember right now. I am going to put a touch of water on here. And I am going to grab just another piece of paper. Let's get a smooth side. Just grab a piece of paper and test before I stamp. Oh yeah. Okay. You want the imperfections. You want it to be light and dark. So I like that. I might add just a smidge more paint off this one edge because it really needs just a little more. And I am, like I said, I am going to be getting it. Um, and if I grab a little bit of that purple in there, that just gives me some dark edges. There we go. We're going to lay this down and get these bricks in. And before I do that, I'm going to hit the start on my phone. <laughs> so I need to, sorry, I'm standing up and you're going to get me there. Start my phone. Zoom in. Start the phone. I got it recording on my phone before this background went in. Yay! <laughs> Let's go to the top down close up. So, putting my mask down. And I'm going to take my bricks and I'm just going to kind of line it up press it down and pick it up. That brick went a little crooked. No big deal. I'm saying this is a rustic wall, right? Offset your bricks. I'm going to turn this sideways, I think, so I can see. And you can see also. So I'm going to offset my brick, leave a space between Well, my mask slipped. So now, now I get to hold my mask, set my brick down, squish, and pick up. Now I know that I'm going to have a brick that is spanning that, spanning that space. See, I have not added any more water or paint. And in some instances, you will see that if I squish really hard, it will make more, whoops, dropped my, dropped my sponge. It will make more bricks. Now I'm going to put water on here. I'm not adding more paint. I'm just going to put water on. Oh, we've got people trading, trading weather in different parts of the world, huh? That's, I'm happy with where I am. I don't mind my, um, I don't mind that we get the rain. Oops, I didn't press hard enough. Get it lined up there, kind of, and go squish. I think I will add some more color. I, I realize that 
This was much smaller than my card and I only did one layer of paint on that sample. So that's why I thought I wouldn't have to add any more, but you know, grab some paint, make sure that it's pretty wet so that it soaks in. This is, this is a rubber stamping technique. Yes, it is, but it's a make your own stamp type of technique. And if the bricks end up being different colors, they just came out of different, uh, different kiln loads. They would be different, different, uh, toastiness. There we go. Yeah, yeah, using a sponge. And this is the uh, Magic Eraser sponge. So it's really very close, um, like I said, close cell. And I'm going to just offset in just a bit on that edge so we can end up with a little bit of interest. Whoops, squish, there we go. It does dry slightly lighter. Offset. I'm kind of doing this one handed. I, I probably could have used some type of um, tape or glue on the bottom of that paper. I'm going to rotate this. I'm reaching across. Now you can tell my bricks they're old. They've sort of been, um, they've been around for a while. They've seen some years. They're not perfectly square anymore. They've, maybe they're recycled. Squish. Oh, there we go. And maybe I'm going to just add a little extra right there. <laughs> it feels like an old brick might I'm going to dry it and then we might go in and add just a little bit of some uh, highlights or shadows into it just adding a little bit of texture all right so taking a quick look we've got North Bay Ontario Canada I know we've got Washington State we usually have Florida and Utah and all kinds of places in here. Thank you so much. Made an easy brick background. Look at that. You could do it, do that just on pieces of watercolor paper and use it as a card. You can cut something out, put it on top. You could hang ornaments on there or use it like a wall and hang pictures on the wall. Oh, wouldn't that be cute? So these are uh, from the cover of my first set of the Christmas winter tags, holiday tags. I Oh, this is my second set. Let's show you set one first. Set one of the tags, holiday tags available right now, digital download on Teespring. The link is up in the chat if you want to get to my Teespring shop. And the um, first nine days of images, second nine days of images, and they come with the large size. This is almost an ATC or the back of a playing card size. And this size right here works really well to cut out and use as ornaments or as tags or as the fronts of cards. This is set two. There's the ones that are like the size of the ATC size. Well, back of card size. And there they are. The next nine days. So I've got, I've got cards for the first 18 days of December. And then all of the designs are available in the digital download book with all of the designs that we're all drawn in one massive marathon. And yeah, there's a coloring book if you don't have a printer. So there, 
I just wanted to, to cover that. Ooh, looks like I've got another color on there. That's interesting. So what I want to do is grab my little mask again. I'm going to hold that on here. Maybe I'll dry everything first. Where did I drop my dryer to? There it is. So we're going to dry the background. Brick background is just about done. I think I'm going to splatter on some really dark just to give it a little bit more texture, but lightly. So I want to grab a toothbrush and some dark brown, maybe with a little bit of the black in it. I'm just covering the actual ornament so that we don't get this inside. Ooh, whoa, that's too wet. That was exciting. Boom. Guess what? It's watercolor. Blot it off. Boom. Blotted. Blot the brush. Make sure your paint is thick enough. If you want to, you can use a little bit of acrylic paint. There. Yeah, I'm still getting some, some big blops. I got too much water on my brush. And this is not the most ideal brush for doing this. It's just adding more texture to the paper, though. And yeah, I've got... Um, some of the splatters into the little sections between. That's okay. I might even pick up a little bit of that color that's out here on the edges and sort of put it in those spaces between in the grout, kind of dirty it up just a little bit. You know, this is, this is behind the fireplace. The fireplace can get a little bit um, sooty. Your grout can get a little bit of your grout or your mortar. It's mortar on, on bricks. Just sort of moving those dots around just a little bit, sort of filling in some of those mortar spaces, giving a little more texture. All right, so since I've got a few of those bigger splots, I'm going to just put a little bit more on some of these bricks, really kind of grunge them up a bit. Water it down so it doesn't look quite like it was brushed on. So more like it just happened. And then my last step is I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow under the edge of those bricks. So I'm going to say that these bricks are on the wall that way. I'm going to take a little bit of this, not that. This, not that? No, I want more the red brown. Take off a bunch of the water. Kind of along the bottom edge of my bricks and maybe along this. See, I, this is not a realistic background. This is definitely a painted background. I did look at some brick backgrounds, backdrops and such on Google. Just do a search for rustic brick background and you will find tons, tons of references. And since I'm not actually painting any of those backgrounds, I'm just using them as a, as a reference point. It was, where am I starting from? There we go. You like that background? Yay. Yay. It's fun. And it's so fast. I mean, really the background is done. I'm just, I'm just playing now. 
I don't have to go in and do any of this extra bit. So this is for fireplace, I believe. Hearth. This is for hearth. Well, what's the hearth? The hearth is the hearth is the heart of the home. It's the place where we gather to be warm and cozy. If you have one, if you don't have one, then it's just a place that you imagine to be warm and cozy. I figure people in Florida don't tend to have fireplaces too often in their homes. If they do, they're very decorative. Uh, so for my friends that are in very warm climates, coming up next week, one of the days is for chimney. And I did I did a chimney at nighttime on the patio. So Christmas on the patio. Because I figure that's where most people in um, very warm places have have their fire is outside. Hello, Mickey. Nice to have you here. So there, I'm pretty much, pretty much really happy with that. Giving it a little bit of shadow. This brick here was, was set on a very crooked, crooked bed of mortar. Sort of popped up a little funny. It happens. It happens. Especially in a rustic fireplace or a rustic hearth, place to stay warm, place to find coziness, place to dry your mittens. I don't have a, an actual fireplace. I do have a, I have a gas fire that looks like a little wood stove and we've had it. Oh, that looks so good. Adding that little touch of shadow. Look at that. Isn't that fun? Very realistic looking in a very painterly kind of way. But yeah, so I've got the gas fire and it is on. It does. We do see the little, the little flame, like a little, we you know with that kind of law, you know, it has like the fake log type of look in there. A little bit of a flame and it's very nice. I think I'm going to put a little bit of some shadow right along that edge. Our background is pretty much in, but by having the gas fire, we we actually heat our whole house with the one little gas fireplace in the living room. And then we have a, an electric oil filled radiator in the bathroom. And that's it for the, for the heat. Unless you count the little tiny decorative, um, electric fireplace, you know, that has the light bulb inside so that it makes it look like the flickering flame. That's where my Christmas tree is actually sitting on top of this year. But we don't really use that for heat. We just use it as a, as a light to decorate. Hello and good morning, Sue. Yay, you made it. All right. I think just because I can feel my hand wanting to go through it, I'm going to wipe off some of this paint on my board around the outside. Also tidies it up just a little bit and gives me more place to put my paint for the actual ornament ball. So we're going to zoom in closer on that ornament ball. See, even close up, even close up that, that uh, brick sort of works together, doesn't it? Oh, I'm happy. Now what I want to do is the inside here. I'm going to have a kind of a brick effect also, but I think mostly I just want it to be the color. So I know that I use some of this red 
and this brown, right? So we're going to get those mixed together. Very wet, very watery. And I am going to have to rotate this sideways because I find that making kind of a brick pattern works better for me if I'm pulling them towards myself. And I'm just going to go in and put like paint stroke, try and do, try and leave some grout space. These are going to be m even more rustic. But by just leave that white space, it makes it come in and look very brick-like. And you can have a mixture of sizes. Maybe you reclaim, maybe the person who put this wall together, they reclaimed bricks from several different places. The, the most important thing I think is just try and get your bricks so they look like they're overlapping with white space between. And I think when I get down here to the bottom, I'm going to, maybe I'll put a baseboard on here. Um, try and keep your bricks level. This person was very safe, has a full brick wall behind their wood stove. There we go. You want to like some comments in here? Yeah, the, the problem in YouTube is they really don't have a way for you to acknowledge comments. Um, not like in Facebook where you can click a like button on a comment. So it's unfortunate, but that's kind of the way it is. Just don't worry, just, just say, hey, that's a great idea, or hey, I like that. And you see, I'm doing this in a lighter version of the background. Just makes it feel like it's part of the scene without, without being too, too worried about making it perfect. I think this one's going to go farther across. And you will find that your bricks change, change width. As long as you keep the row the same size of bricks, it'll be fine. It'll read just, just fine. Some of my, some of my bricks were thicker and some are thinner. And that's okay. You have a pellet stove, Mickey. Yes, and th this would look very much like a pellet stove. Wouldn't there be like a hopper or something over here on the side where you pour your pellets into and then they just drip down in and keep the fire going? Let's see. It's like, that's right. I have the color right here on my, I still have that color right here on my board. This is a piece of Coroplast. It's a plastic signboard. You can get it at sign, board, sign shops, print shops. You can get it, uh, many times the print shops will have um, waste that they're going to be throwing away. And they'll give you, you know, either give it to you for free or give it to you for a very low cost. Cut pieces of the signboard. Or you can buy full sheets at uh, the hardware store where they do the signboards for 
garage sales, yard sales, jumble sales, or you can find it in the big box craft stores where they sell poster board. Okay, well, I think, yeah, I think I'm going to put a dark brown baseboard on here. So I'm just going to grab some of this uh, kind of uh, burnt umber brown, maybe. There's a little, yeah, no, just that burnt umber brown, I think. I'm going to give it just a nice dark brown baseboard. And that kind of helps to hide the, any imperfections in what my wall looked like as I was coming down. I'm a little crooked. It's okay. So there we are. We've made it to the wall. I think I'm going to grab just some of that um, kind of the burnt sienna brown. And I'm going to come forward and maybe make it a uh, like a tile floor. I think that it's, it's kind of smart to have a tile right underneath of your fireplace. If it's going to be getting hot there, sort of a darker brown version of like a terracotta tile. And so I'm going to leave space because there would be grout. They can be different colors. I'm going to actually just checkerboard this on though and not worry about offsetting so much. But they're not perfect. And then we've got room for the rug here in front. Maybe I'll just take that, that brown right down here. So it looks like that little rug is laying on top of the tiles. We will be adding other colors to make this look like a little glass ball and putting highlights on it. Oh my goodness, that is working out really, really well. What do you guys think so far? Fireplace. I think this is going to be kind of a trendy fireplace. It's going to be one of those ones that was put in like probably in the late 90s, early 2000s. It's going to be the um, iron fireplace, you know, cast iron fireplace, but it's going to be one of those enameled ones. So we can make it a color. What color do we want to make this enamel fireplace? Do we want it to be um, sort of like a pearl gray color with the flame going on? I can go in and start putting the flame in, I think. Start putting the flame in. So to do the flame in first, I am actually going to put a little bit of some darker brown in here, inside the windows. So it makes it, it makes it so that the flame actually looks like it's going to glow in there a little bit. There's some shadow. Oh, Gina, I've had, I've had fire on the, the fireplace videos with Christmas music. YouTube has about a billion of them. You can find them with full Christmas scenes. You can find them with um, Christmas music playing or just the crackling fire. And then you can turn it down to whatever volume you want it to be. So, so pretty. Turn off all the other lights. Just have your Christmas lights on and the crackling fire on the fireplace. Like the old fashioned Yule logs that they would play on Christmas Eve. There's a a famous one here in 
the Pacific Northwest, they go into the lodge at uh, Timberline, which is an, a beautiful old lodge. And they do the uh, big, huge, they have a huge stone fireplace. And there's two St. Bernards, Heidi and I can never remember what the other one's name is, but they, uh, the, the St. Bernards walk through and they poke the fire every, you know, the humans poke the fire every once in a while, throw another log on the fire. And that was, and then they would have Christmas music, the old traditionals, you know, um, Bing Crosby and Andy Williams and all of those guys. I'm just putting some little bit of darker black right up at the top inside there yeah, I am a I love Christmas and this year Christmas started Christmas music started uh, well before Thanksgiving and this year the uh, watching the fires the fireplaces with the Christmas music started well before Thanksgiving also <laughs> <laughs> Joan, how do I make each one better than the last one? Ah, that is so sweet of you to say. You know, really and truly, the way each one starts to feel better than the last one is when you are when you are painting every day. You're building your skills. I'm gonna put kind of a an orange right in here. I think just start getting a bit of that orange glow going up into that brown area. These are shadows and dancing colors and, you know, you love all the Christmas paintings. So relaxing. Thank you. Thank you. I'm hoping that we, um, that we attract more of an audience like you that love Christmas paintings and love the, love the relaxation the it is so relaxing to watch you know i truthfully it's relaxing to watch paint go on paper and see a design come out if you want to see this i will zoom out here and show you where we came where we started from and where we are right now so let's let's do that i need to flip through the book and find the fireplace that's the chandelier Oh, I must have put it earlier in this one. This is my, um, I just grabbed the pages and stuck them together. I did not. Come on, where's the fireplace? <laughs> yeah, see, there's all kinds of stuff. There's the chimney coming up on um, Christmas Eve. This is the 23rd. This is tomorrow. <laughs> There it is. See, I'm a little out of order in my book, but let's. So this is where we started and this is where we are. Moving along, moving along. <laughs> excellent, excellent, Sue. It's 7.30 a.m. where you are. Yeah, well, it's 7.30 a.m. Monday morning where you are. So. I think we're doing, I think we're doing okay. And this was, these were all hand drawn during that live marathon. Ah, uh, Amy, you're just going to have to, to check out the replay for how we did the brick. Yeah. I am going to grab a bit more of this kind of orangey color, put some of that down. I want to mix around between some colors. So I want to get this little bit of that bright yellow down. I think I can mix it between those two colors, sort of a bright yellow and a bright yellow and a ready orange. <laughs> we still have all of the fireplace to do. So we're, we're here for a couple more minutes. You know, it's, it's not, not like we're going to jump out anytime soon. I think, Let's see, grab some, I'm gonna take the yellow and put that in. I'm just sort of giving myself um, 
random drips of that yellow. And I want to dry it. Yes, I use... Okay, so just so that you know, it was a cut piece of magic eraser the size of the bricks. And we used a mask to mask off the ball. There's the dirty one. And I could still get more bricks out of that if I just get it wet with a brush. So drying the drying the yellow. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me some little harder lines of color. <laughs> oh, Catherine, you're doing fine. You're making paper today. Lovely. Oh, Lolly, sitting at the sitting at the piano and playing Christmas music is totally, totally a relaxing, creative thing to do. I'm going to mix a little bit of that orange into the yellow now and just start dancing it in, having the colors just sort of playing around, leaving a little bit of white here and there too down farther down in the in the fire down lower you'll have more heat closer to the wood that's down inside so it would actually be whiter white -er. oh yeah you know, it's, it's really interesting. I'm so glad that people are finding things to be creative with and to, you know, spend, spend their time making their hearts happy because really and truly we need to make ourselves happy and no one else can make that happiness happen for you. You have to just decide that you're going to be happy no matter what. And find the happiness, find the, find the joy in whatever you're doing. I think I am going to take a tiny touch of gouache now inside the fire. I want some really bright white. I'm not going to splatter or anything. This is just going to be down here a little bit closer to the bottom maybe a few little sparks of light up higher just get ourselves yeah I even used just picked up a little bit of that orange maybe a little bit of that red even though I've got a bit of gouache what it's going to do is just make those colors a little bit more opaque. Even though fire is very transparent, translucent, it's also, it, it has form, it has a feeling to it. It almost feels three-dimensional. So you can build those layers up. Put in some darker red. Get some shadows in there. Ooh, there. See? Have some layers in your paint. And don't be afraid of putting layers down and going, ooh, whoops, maybe I went too far. Or maybe I didn't go far enough. I like it. Ooh, floating a piece of handmade watercolor paper between two glass panes that has been watercolor painted. Ooh, yeah, isn't that a great brick background? And it's so fun and so easy. So yeah, definitely check the beginning of the video if you didn't come in at the beginning. You're here during the live stream. Uh, check the beginning so that you can get the step-by-step. -step. It's so easy. 
I'm just putting a little bit more shadow up inside there. This is still not realism. It is not realistic. Did we say what color we wanted to do the enamel? I was thinking maybe that dove gray kind of kind of enamel and then I can use blue shadows on it. And then there's enough contrast between this and the fairy background or I could do it a deep forest green. Hmm. Hmm. Ah uh, yeah, Catherine, please do a do a video on making handmade paper. That's always a good bet. People like handmade paper videos. Yeah, I'm getting lost in just looking at this also. It's it's so fun. Maybe while I'm letting that dry, I'll come over here and do the stocking. Thank you, Mary. If you like what Stephanie is doing, press that like button. Yeah, make sure and click that subscribe button too, guys. I am... Like I've said before, I'm kind of in that flux area right now where the, where I'm, my channel is definitely doing its shift from one main group of subscribers and working towards a new main group. You guys are all part of my main group. Just tell you, you guys are, you guys are here. You're for me. Dove Gray. Yeah, that's, that's kind of where I was going. So the Dove Gray is going to actually be. I'm going to use that uh, sort of neutral wimpy black. And then I'm going to grab some of that Prussian blue, a little more. A little more blue. And then we will use, I think, some of the white gouache for highlights with some of this gray mixed in. Now I'm going to get it really wet. I'll start down low in the, in the darkest areas. Oops, way too much water in my brush. This is a number 12 round mimic by Creative Mark. It comes to a super great point and I've been using this brush for over a year and I love it. So I'm just, I'm putting like on, on these little feet, just dropping some paint on. I think I'll do the chimney next because the chimney might still be a bit more of the, the metal, the, the, the iron dark look, maybe. But I can always lighten it up with a little bit of a little bit of the white gouache. I'm kind of looking at my shadows and taking this in. But I'm leaving white. And because this is not going to be a black fireplace. But I'm making these kind of blue. blue black shadowy areas indentations maybe the maybe that actually sticks out those embossing bits on some of them this would be these would be windows i did not make them windows i'm making them in bits and out bits You see how this color is drying to more of a gray though. So we're getting, we're starting to get that as the, as the color is running out on my brush, I'm moving more and more into the areas where it would be lighter. I need to rotate this so that I can pull a line. It's way easier to pull a line than it is to push. So pull a line towards you. Pulling the line towards me. Now 
Well, you know what, though? I think that these little triangles right here are going to be glass. So I'm just going to go in and grab just a bit. of my of my glass my glass colors glowing and then just a touch of just a touch of a brown kind of right at the top if it sort of flows across that's okay it still gives me that glowy feel maybe while those things are drying a bit I'm going to come down here and I am, this is one of those paintings where you kind of go all over the place. So I'm kind of going all over the place. I'm going to grab some brown to kind of put uh, some bark in on the wood. We've got some little round logs. We've got some cut log bits. I think maybe a little bit of a orange mixed into it. Kind of, and then I can lighten it up. Oh yeah, pulling a line is always easier. It's, I, it, that was a tip that I learned back in high school from my art teacher, Mr. Jolliver. Loved Mr. Jolliver because he let me do whatever I wanted to do in the art class. There were, there were like three of us in the school at, at, during my of my class or of the time I was in high school that we pretty much could do whatever we wanted to the the teacher knew that we already had skills and it was kind of he felt very bad about you know at that time you had to take you know, basic art drawing class or basic, basic um, art class where you learned about the material safety and all those different things. And you learned basic perspective and how to draw basic things. And we were, we were kid, we were those kids that we always had sketchbooks. We always were drawing. We always, um, so we were much more advanced. And he couldn't put us in the advanced art class because we were only sophomores. So, and the high school that I went to was only sophomores through seniors. We didn't have freshmen in the class, in the school. So brand new kids in the school and we were, you know, told, Hey, as long as you are turning in projects, do whatever projects make you happy. And if you need help or have questions, ask. And one of the cool things is, is that Mr. Jolliver was actually my dad's art teacher also when he was in high school. So when the, just after the high school had opened, my dad had gone there. Oh, congratulations to your sister-in-law. That is a really good accomplishment. Wow. Yeah. So, so yeah, we got to, um, got to do whatever we wanted to in the art class. And that made me really happy for the most part. But, you know, it was also kind of like, well, I don't have anybody telling me what to do, so I have to figure it out. And that's where I learned a lot of, you know, making creative decisions. Like there, I just made that rug green and I think it's going to have little lines of red coming in it just because. And if you look here, I'm kind of working them around in a bit of a diagonals. Maybe I'll put a little bit of red, let it blur into the green and sort of become like shadows. But yeah, choosing, being able to choose your own creative stuff 
especially when it makes you happy, is the best. And that's why I like these, these classes that we're doing here, the painting classes here online. Because even though I'm doing this, you could do something totally different. Pull the line. But anyway, where I came from that was Mr. Jolliver taught me how to pull the lines. He was a watercolorist. He was a professional watercolorist. I did not appreciate as much of his skills. I mean, I appreciated the skills. But, you know, when you're a kid, you don't appreciate the skills that others have when you're, you're so, fo you're so self-centered. I, you know, you're self-centered. You're, you're centered on learning your own stuff and you're not worried about what other people are able to teach you so much. And you have to learn your own, you know, have your own errors and mistakes and, and all of that. Well, now I'm thinking back, he taught me so much. And I'm glad, I guess I was listening See, I let that, that center bit where all the flame was, that's all dry there now. So we can go in and do sort of a bit of a shadowy bit here. You just found one of your first paintings you did with oils? Oh, Mary, that sounds wonderful. I was looking through some stuff and I found uh, some photos of me from a play that I did in high school. Oh my gosh, I look like I was about 12 years old. I was 16, 17 in these pictures, but boy, I looked like I was 12. Which was fine because we were doing children's theater play and I was the little princess, so, you know. The little princess and the moon. The princess who wouldn't laugh. And the jester would try everything to make her laugh. And then from the play that I directed, oh my gosh, but why bump off Barnaby? One of those kind of fake British mysteries. It was a lot of fun. I am gonna grab a bit of that white gouache now with my, with my blue black. And we're gonna start putting some of that gray in. right over the top of some of the black. See, and you notice what I did here is I tested it. I didn't actually go right onto the fireplace. I went up onto the chimney because if the chimney didn't turn out, I could always just take it and make it black. Yeah, I like that. And then we can go back in with the white gouache and make it even sh feel a little bit shinier. So I think I'm gonna go onto some of those shadows and work it forward. Getting that gray in there, that sort of soft dove gray, leaving some of the shadows. You need to leave some shadows so that you have highlight or room for highlights. I was thinking about the marathon coming up on New Year's Eve, and I've, I've got lots of ideas. Things can change, so this might not be exactly what happens, but I'm thinking that I would do a, like a teapot and then a cup, and maybe the cup will have a treat with it. So I've got some things to make the, 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 
little sets. So the teacup and the cup and the pot would go together and maybe a mug and a coffee pot would go together. But with the mug or the cup, there will always be a little treat so that we have, you know, self care. We have cozy, whimsical. The neat thing is, is that teapots give me room to be able to do a scene if I wanted to. Or we can, you know, or there might be some teapots that are done as, um, you know, like actual shapes. I'm thinking about going and looking at some of the teapot collector type sites and coffee pot collectors and see, I know that there's such a thing as a, as a chocolate pot, a pot for making, for having hot chocolate in. I don't know if they're that much different than a teapot or a coffee pot, but I know that there's, there is a thing. Yeah, right over here, there's a comfy chair and there's a footstool and a blanket, a nice pillow and a little table sitting next to it that you can set your cup of coffee or your tea on. See, I have this all thought out in my head. This is, this is a whole world inside of a ball. I think I wanna make that stocking green with red toe and red heel. Let's, so I'm just, I'm just grabbing a green. I'm not even sure what, that's kind of a trendy green. You can go with a trendy green. Sort of dark under the cuff. Dark on the instep, dark in the shadow, and then rinse my brush out. You have your grandmother's glass hot chocolate set. Ooh. I'd love to see a picture of that, Gina. If you have the opportunity, if it's not packed away somewhere. I'd love to see a photo of it. See what I did there? I just put the green in the shadows and then pulled it out to cover the whole thing. That way you've got a little bit of shape and form and you didn't really have to do a lot of work. That's one of those tricks that you um, learn from if you are doing watercolor pens or the uh, Copic markers. That type of, that type of trick, put, put your color down in the shadowy bit and then pull the color out. And this cuff is going to be maybe red and red and gray, red and white. And then I'm pulling the red into the heel. And a little bit of that red got into the green. That's okay, because I can just use that. Green and red make a brown or a shadow tone. So you can just use it. And the reason why that happened was because I didn't dry the green. You know, sometimes you don't dry when you're doing these things and colors will sort of flow into each other a little bit darker. Want a little bit more red on the toe. Let's see, I think I've got all these like red and orange and brown on the on my palette. So I'm just going to use that to make sort of a little shadowy bit. Doesn't always have to make sense, guys. Doesn't always have to make sense. Actually, I think just because I'm feeling 
feeling that way. I'm going to put a little bit of some of the shadow up here on the dry brick. Not everywhere, just a few, few places here and there. Make it stand out just a little bit more. Now I'm going to say that this is inside the inside the ball and not being painted on the outside. You could certainly just give it one bright highlight and say it's on the outside and that's the way I want it. <laughs> Perfectly fine. But yeah, I really, I like this one. I was a little bit afraid of it. If you guys want to know the truth, I was a little bit afraid of this one. I was like, ooh, did I bite off more than I could chew? How am I going to make this, you know, how am I going to make this work? Truthfully, we could stop right there. We could be done. I'm going to put a little bit of some highlights. A little bit of highlights. Go over here, see if I can... See if I can get any of that gouache to loosen up just a smidge. Just rubbing it with my brush and kind of coming at it from the side that didn't have the black or gray. Just softening that up. I want to put a bit of a highlight on here sort of around. I want this to feel like it's one of those enamel ones, you know, so it's it's got some shine. Now I'm not looking at a reference for this little guy though, so uh, my my lighting, my colors can be totally off. Where my shadows would hit can be totally off. But you know what? It doesn't really matter. I'm going to take right across because I want that to make sure and feel like there's glass and there's a bit of a I'm going to say there's a little bit of a shine right along that edge on the inside where it kind of caught on the those mullions That's looking good. That is looking good. Now I, it looks like it could go into a dollhouse. Oh yeah. You know, that would, this would be a really cool kind of thing to do for an advent where you have one big page and you do these, these um, little scenes and over the top of it, you put the page with the number so that you can open the door up, have it like attach on the edge. And then you could have different scenes in the dollhouse. Ooh, that would be really pretty. That would be very involved and it would be quite large. <laughs> but you know what? I think that is a really cool idea. Oh, I'm really, really enjoying this. If you are, make sure that you click that subscribe button, the like button, share button, all the buttons. Click all the buttons, guys. Turn on your notifications. Make sure that you are in the know. If you want, you can sign up on my website for the uh, for my newsletter. I am trying and follow my follow my website. I just did a post update on my website. My patrons just got a post update on the Patreon site. Um, I'm trying to get information out all over the place. See, I just took a little bit of that, that dark color. I wanted to deepen up 
a little bit more on that stocking. Maybe I'll even put a little bit of it right close to the stocking in the shadow. Maybe there's multiple light sources in the house. That is cool. All right, so now I need to work on... Yeah, yeah. Well, it's the, the bricks and then that ever so slight diagonal that we have coming out forward right here in the ball. It's like there's a like there's a wall down the middle of the ball and this is in front of it or this is one of those flat back glass ornaments all the different things i'm going to grab some of that prussian blue again just the blue maybe a little of the orange in it making sort of a neutral gray color And I'm going to come up here under the edge of the cap. I'm going to come down along the side and then come to, so I started narrow, I went wider and then I came down to the bottom and it's pretty narrow down here. All right, I'm going to do the same thing again coming from right up here. I'm leaving a space of light and I'm not going to go as far down. See how we're starting to get the, the shape of the ball in. I think I'm going to flip it over and start at the bottom and work my way up this time. My brush wasn't wet enough. And this is the reason why I don't put the paint on this side because I set my hand down. I just set it down in the paint. I'm going to grab some of that darker, darker blue, brown, green, gray. <laughs> and I'm going to put some of that right up here at the top. And then I'm going to swoop down just getting a little bit of those highlights. I want even darker right up under the cap. So I just grabbed a little bit of that wimpy black, a little bit darker right here at the top. A little darker coming right down the outside because I'm going to put a highlight on there and I want a little bit darker space for the highlight to sit on top of. And I am going to use just some of that wimpy black, boom, 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 up here in the cap, leave, leave some highlights makes it feel shiny. I am going to say that this one is actually hanging on a nail. Let's see. Get that started. So I'm putting a nail into the into the mortar. You know, rustic, rustic walls, people pound nails into all kinds of things, right? And then I can take a little bit of that highlight, highlight the edge of it. I need a little, oh, I just realized I need a little bit of some of that kind of red brown color right inside there. That is 
really cool. Really, really cool. So tomorrow at its fullest and a couple days after, you'll be able to see the conjunction of the star, the planets that make that uh, Christmas star look. Yeah. I'm hoping that we will have a clear day on one of them. So now I'm just grabbing, a, I'm not going to use all that white that I just put out there. I just want a sheer amount. I just want to get a bit of highlight right over that in a few spots. Too much water. Don't use too much water. Now you guys will hear me talking and you'll hear, you know, I say too much water. Don't use so much water. I'm talking to myself <laughs> and if it's helpful to you, I am so happy. So I'm just very light hand, very, very light. I'm just putting a few of these little skinny little lines of light. It, it helps give that illusion that this is a ball. Now this one right here is a little bit dry. So I'm going to go ahead and soften that up and that is the bravery test you know just putting paint right over the top of where you just spent you know the last hour making a pretty painting and then you're going boom right over the top of it and adding more and adding paint that's obscuring areas and you're like um that's kind of scary but you know what you get used to it and you remember it's just paint. It's just paint and paper. And you can change it up, fix it, do whatever you need. See, a little bit more. And I think I'm gonna put a little tiny bit of sort of that reddish brown, just a, a bit of a shadow back there, maybe a bit, well, oh, that's got too much wet white in it. Let's get the browns and a little bit of that blackish neutrally color there. There, now we've, now we've got a bit of a shadow. Maybe, Ooh, not quite dark enough. Just a little. not doing too much just it's more just an emotional shadow <laughs> it's not a super super strong it's more just a little emotional support shadow it's not that much there we're gonna dry it pull the tape off of it and and I look at that and go mm, hold it a second you know what Let's, inside there, I'm just going to say that there's a reflection of a bit of that, the color from outside. There. All right. <laughs> okay, let's dry this and see what it looks like with the tape off. It's gonna be so much fun. I hope that you guys are enjoying this. Make sure to click that like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, share the video, share your artwork with me on social media. I am on Instagram and Twitter and Pinterest and Facebook at Deliberately Creative. My website is deliberately hyphen creative or dash creative.com for my website and I'm also on Teespring with all kinds of fun products. So here we go, peeling the tape. I love that 
really crisp white edge. It just makes it feel so finished. Pull that out of the way. Okay, that one looks like the ball is actually three-dimensional and shimmering. There's no metallics. There's no pearls. It's all just the inexpensive watercolor paint. This is just the 42 color watercolor set from, I got it on Amazon. It's in my art, um, Amazon store. So check the, my art tab, my art, my arts category uh, for the paints. And by clicking on the link, it is an affiliate. It does help to support my channel. And here we go. <laughs> so now Catherine says that the one the one that I do today is always her favorite one. So tomorrow, it'll the Robin will be her favorite one. I betcha. I betcha. So tomorrow is going to be... If I can... Do I have it right there? Nope, that's next week. So I'll show you those in just a second. Where did the Robin go? There he is. Tomorrow is the cute little Robin. I think we're going to have him outside. And maybe we'll put like just a tree branch or a holly branch going across and blue skies. I like that. And maybe a little bit of a snowy feel to it. Or maybe there won't be a branch. The branch is up here somewhere and it's just going to be snowy looking. We'll have all kinds of things. And then Tuesday will be the poinsettia. And then I will be going to my dropped videos. And we will be having the Christmas stocking, and it does have the metallic paints from the Arteza 24 color metallic set. The Chimnea that I showed you a moment ago with the sort of outer space Aurora type of feel to it, or not Aurora, Milky Way, the Milky Way feel. Christmas Day will be the Christmas gift with the fun glowing sort of that beach grass feel again. And the day after Christmas is the magical Christmas lights with a fun glowing effect. So be on the lookout. These are all going to be dropped videos. I think the 23rd, I think the, the 23rd, whichever one, the, I think the stocking is going to be a premiere. So I'll be live in the chat and we will be able to get together right before the holiday. But this is today's and I am so happy. I hope you are. Remember to go out and do something creative. Oh, sorry. I've got to sign it. I get yelled at if I forget to sign it. So I'm just going to sign it right here on one of those tiles on the inside of the ball. There we go. Make sure and go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. I want to see you back here again tomorrow, Monday, 10 a.m. for The Robin. <laughs>